welcome to House of Design Robot Studio Tutorials. Today we're going to take what we have um, made before. Uh, it's a pin actuator that has uh, been made into a smart component that has a mechanism and some sensors built into it. Makes it really easy to import into the station. And then today we're going to show how to connect that up to a, to a virtual controller and to be able to control it using the rapid code. So. Uh, we'll begin, create a station, super easy. Come in, we're gonna go and we're gonna import in that smart component pin actuator that we had made on the last tutorial. Here it is here, just as a recap. It has a mechanism, has a smart component built into it. So when I actually go in and play this and look at the signals, it actually gives me the signals back from it makes it really easy to where we can take this and we can move it and everything just follows. So we can move it wherever we wanna have it and all the signals and everything just follow it. So, so there we have it. What we wanna do is we're gonna come in and we're just gonna actually make a, a new system. I'm just gonna have a IRB120, just standard system. So just create that virtual controller with the 120. Wait a second here while it creates it. So we will move this out of the, oh, I guess it's here. So here's the 120, we're just gonna select that one, import this one in, there it is. We're actually gonna take uh, this pin actuator spark component that we have and just move it out of the way. So here we have it. Now, if we were to look at this, our pin actuator has properties associated with it. It has these four signals. It has two inputs and two outputs. And so what we want to look at is we want to look at the station signals. So if we go into the simulation tab, this is how I get to it. The station logic looks just like a smart component, but you go into the design tab and here you have the pin actuator that we have set up in there. And here you have the virtual controller. So if I come into the virtual controller, we can see we don't have any signals set up into it. So what we need to do is we need to create the signals in the virtual controller that then will uh, be connected to the pin actuator. So of course, how we do that, you can do that many different ways. Easy way for me to come in, I just go into the IO system, signal, double click signal, right click, new signal. I'm gonna call it Let's just call it DO pin actuate. Let's just do pin actuator one uh, extend. So I try to make it easy on myself and I copy so that I can use it over and over again. Now this is going to be a digital output out of the virtual controller, which is a digital input into that device. We're not gonna assign it to any device. It's just, just gonna be a virtual signal access level to all and create that one. So now we have that one, we're gonna come in, we're gonna copy it, we're gonna actually make this pin actuator one uh, retract. Same thing. So those are two uh, outputs. Come in, copy that signal. We're gonna make this a digital input. We're gonna say DI pin actuator one extended digital input retracted okay so now we have two outputs out of the virtual controller we have two inputs into the virtual controller so now of course we have to restart that uh, the VC to be able to have those signals take effect once we do that, we can now see that the controller down here on the right hand side is green, it's ready to go. I'm gonna close out of that. Now we are back into the station um, logic. So we can come in and now what we're gonna see is we're gonna have these four signals. So we're just gonna put them in here. And what you're gonna see is that the digital outputs are on one side and the digital inputs are on the other. That's just a default thing that, that they have set up. So now my pin actuator, we do the exact same thing. Pin actuator one extend. So I'm gonna come in, retract. I'm actually gonna come in extended and retracted. 
So now inside my virtual controller, I now have my signals attached to the pin actuator. So we'll close out of that. We now have our virtual controller. I'm just going to go through and go into uh, the rapid code now. Inside our main loop here, uh, I'm just going to add some code. I don't know what we want to do, but let's just say that we're going to do uh, while true, uh, while true do, just an endless while loop. Oh, sorry. Okay, that we're actually going to come over here and we're going to do, I don't know, we're just going to set do, do, uh, pin actuator one extend. And we're going to set that to a one. Then we're going to wait um, di, di, pin actuator one extended. Wait for that to be a one. And once that's a one, we're just going to come in and copy these because we're going to set pin actuator one. Oops, sorry. We want to, as soon as that becomes, as soon as we see it's out there, we're going to shut off that signal and then we're going to come in and I don't know, let's just put a wait time in there. You know, one second. And then we're going to come back in and do retracted or retract All right and then we're going to say um, retracted okay so let's see what that's going to do so that should should go through and we should see that we're going to extend that pin wait for it to be extended once it's extended, we're going to shut that signal off, wait a second, we're going to then do the retracted, wait for the pin to be retracted, get that signal, and then shut that signal off. Okay, and then we probably just want to wait another second there just to, just to have it. So now, if we apply those changes, and we come in and we want to run the simulation what you can see is that it's going up and down and we tied it to the IRC5 and now our pin actuator is actually setting the signal waiting for the signal to be set or getting the sensor back and we have now created a virtual controller that controls that pin actuator so very simple but that is the way that you get it into uh, the IRC5 so that we can now um, set up these signals uh, to be able to control virtual uh, mechanisms with limit switches that we can really start testing and troubleshooting you know the offline programming portion of a system before it's even built. So hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks.